Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Uh, the sun's starting to come out after several days of rain here in Vancouver, so I got my golf shirt on. I want to talk about linguistics and universal grammar and respond to some of the comments that have been uh, uh, put on my, uh, you know, underneath some of my videos about linguistics. Um, why am I so, or appear to be so anti-intellectual? Anti I guess that's the frequent sort of theme of, of the people that come at me. Well, first of all, let me say that I'm not anti-intellectual. I like to read. I have, in fact, read a lot of books about linguistics uh, and about language learning, and I'm going to show you some of them. But I also like to keep things simple. Uh, the old uh, Occam's razor theory, if there is an easy explanation and a complicated explanation, I prefer the easy one. Uh, I think that language learning is just a matter of exposing yourself to the language. That if you, as I've said many, many times, I won't go back into it again, that's how the child learns. The adult has the advantage that they can read and write, love to read and that the uh, adult has a lot of experience, has a lot of vocabulary in his own or her own language. But essentially we observe the language, the, for, the brain forms uh, patterns and Eventually, we start to be able to speak, and the more we speak, the better we get. No, the child doesn't get corrected all the time. We don't need to get corrected all the time, but it can help, so I'm not against it. But just, just have a look at, I just went up to my, you know, where I keep all my books to see what I had, what I'd read over the last, you know, seven or eight year, years since I got interested in the subject. So first of all, we have Crashen, Foreign Language Education, The Easy Way. Thin book, excellent book, hardly recommended. That's not to say I agree with everything there, but I recommend it. Now, here we have the Cambridge Guide to Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Uh, basically, I didn't find much in there that was useful because it overcomplicates things. Uh, what else do we have here? The Practice of English Language Teaching by Jeremy Harmer. Okay, I've read that book. Um, second, second Language Acquisition by Rod Ellis. Okay, again, some good stuff, some bad stuff. Second language, vocabulary acquisition. James Cody, Thomas Hucken. I prefer the way we do it at Link. Language teaching methodology, a textbook for teachers. David Noonan, all right. How about this, vocabulary in language teaching. Norbert Schmidt. Again, none of this stuff really influenced very much what we do at length. Probably the best book I read on vocabulary was Learning Vocabulary in Another Language by Mr. Nation. 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 All right. How Languages Are Learned. Patsy Lightbound, Nina Spada. All right. Again, my overwhelming impression of all these books is that they were too complicated. So I also read books about the brain. Uh, an excellent book, The Mind and the Brain, how our will and our determination can influence what happens in the brain, even though, of course, our will and determination itself are phenomena of the brain, so to speak. I like reading in different languages, Das Gehirn, which was nowhere near as good as Lernen by Manfred Spitzer, which I have often referred to, which was very good about the cognitive process and the brain. And I find these books much more useful than the uh, linguistics books. But I have not ignored the linguistics. So I've read by R.H. Robbins, A Short History of Linguistics with a Chinese intro. I bought it in Beijing because every time I travel, I go to bookstores. Uh, in Stockholm, I bought a book, Les Apofremen des Broek, about reading and how we can improve reading in a foreign language. Uh, I dislike sociolinguistics, but I want to understand what it's all about. So I bought a book by Don Bonnie Norton called Identity and Language Learning, Gender, Ethnicity, and Educational Change. Didn't influence what we do at Link, I can tell you that. Then I read this book by uh, Julia Cristeva, Le Langage, C'est Inconnu. Okay, because I happened to be on holiday in uh, near uh, Po, at, uh, near Po for two weeks. So I went to the bookstore and bought books on linguistics in French. Here, here is an excellent book, Le Langage, Nature, Histoire et Usage, and it has a number of leading French linguistics experts who, amongst other things, tear 
Chomsky's Universal Grammar apart. All right? I can quote from there if someone's interested. Essay de linguistique, Louis-Jean Calvé. Interesting from a sociolinguistics perspective, but also not strong on Chomsky's, Chomsky's Universal Grammar. La Arquitectura de los Recuerdos, because I'm always interested in, you know, how we remember things and stuff like that. I had a bit of a spat with Claude Agege in French, and I consider him a, a French language chauvinist, and this book, Le Français, Histoire d'un Combat, is interesting in terms of describing the history of French, but of course he gets carried away with the whole glorious expansion of the French language, and now it's retreat in the face of the English onslaught. Uh, to understand is to invent the future of education, Jean Piaget. Uh, of course, more on language and Chomskyist disciples like Steven Pinker's The Language Instinct. What else have we got? Again, it's nice to read the same, read about the same subject, you know, in different ways. So this teach yourself book on linguistics. Um, what else? I do subscribe to the foreign to the American Council on Teaching of Foreign Languages report, which I must say I don't read very much. It only confirms my sense that things are over complicated. I just happen to pull down this CD here and I strongly recommend that anyone who really wants to get good at languages do a lot of listening and get to where you can listen to real literature, things that are of interest to you, where you can also access the text. So basically what I'm trying to say is I read, but I don't buy it. I think that I don't buy this overcomplication, like a fellow that just posted on my uh, YouTube channel about the video that he did on vocabulary, it's oversimplification, I need to be parsing, uh, and, and he misunderstood what I said, of course, I didn't say that you just learn the few words and phrases, I, I don't have it handy, so I can't quote it, oh, here he is, he, he criticizes my uh, video on vocabulary, he says, more aggressive discouraging of high standards and excellence. Well, what are your standards? I haven't heard you speak some foreign language, whoever you are here. Brand of costumes uh, is his name. Basic phrases and vocabulary usually learned at the beginning. No, I'm not talking about basic phrases and vocabulary. I'm saying that the process of language learning is a long road. And you be begin by learning a few, uh, uh, you know, the basic words and phrases, which are easily learned. But thereafter, there's a long, long road as you pick up the, the large number of words that make up the the 20% lower frequency words that you need in order to be comfortable in any context. It's a long road. And, you know, you don't have any way to parse them. I don't want to parse them. Uh, unless you have studied morphology, I don't even know what morphology is. And I, I mean, I know, but I'm not interested in morphology. I'm interested in learning the language from the language and enjoying myself, listening, reading, and starting then to talk and enjoy the language. And I know that the brain will pick it up that way. I don't need to parse. I don't need to know what morphology is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Ironic that you think an L1 gloss constitutes their meaning. I don't. I think that a, the quickest uh, uh, hint to what the word means is the translation into my own language. And especially at the beginning where I couldn't read a Turkish explanation of what a horse is. Uh, whereas if it says horse, I know what a horse is. But I also know that for most of these words, I have to see them again and again in different contexts to get a full sense of what they mean and how they're used. Uh, you ignore the intricate complex complexities of rule-governed behavior of the hierarchical system. What, you know, the brain will get used to it. And one other thing I want to say, why I am, I'll probably run over the 10 minutes, but the problem, why I, I so disagree with this approach of universal grammar is that most of the people who write on universal grammar and most of the references that I've seen to it in French and English and other languages ha involve people talking about the languages that they know, typically French, English, Spanish, Italian, and describing the phenomena that they, dis they see in those languages and explaining why there's this underlying universal uh, set of rules, even though superficially they may look different. But what is language? Uh, in Japanese, for example, the, the people don't talk, and, and even in, like in, in, in Russian, you don't have to have a verb in, in a sentence. This book means this is a book. So there's no is, no and. This book, this is a book. In Japanese, people say, uh, you know, uh, iku. 
It just means go. That means are you going? They just say iku. Or uh, itta. Just did you go? Itta. Do. How? What does do mean? Japanese person knows. How was it? Didn't mean how did you go. It means how was it? In other words, the whole range of communication with words that are not said, that's still language. And in some languages, that is in fact the way communication takes place. Very simplified. And in some languages, you have a more formal structure and an informal structure. And both the informal, the very informal, and or the very formal can be quite cryptic and quite short. And it's still language and it's still communication. And so, and of course, these things evolve. Uh, the relationship between words evolve. The, if you want, grammatical function of words evolves. The meaning of words evolves. Um, you know, again, getting back to, to uh, the Japanese, I mean, there you have, have um, you know, adjectives that are in the past tense. Do, how was it? Do, yokata. Was good. There's no verb there. It's yokata. You know, yoi, i, good, has a past tense. So I, you know, I just can't see where there's any underlying structure. And, and whoever writes on language, about a universal grammar, may know five languages, ten languages, they don't know three thousand, six thousand languages. So, um, and, and I understand too that, that one of uh, Chomsky's reasons for assuming there was a universal grammar was otherwise, he said, how could you explain that children uh, learn to speak so quickly? Well, they don't learn to speak so quickly. They spend an awful long time hearing the language. They're even exposed to the language in the womb. So, uh, and when they start speaking, they stumble and they gradually, through trial and error, uh, uh, you know, pick up on the pattern of the language that surrounds them, which, you know, could be spoken in more complete sentences uh, in some languages or in some environments, or could be spoken in very basic uh, forms of communication where a lot of other stuff uh, outside the language is understood. So, I guess what I'm saying is that I enjoy languages, I enjoy learning them. Uh, when I start new languages, uh, I will, at, at link, we're going to introduce new languages, uh, Czech, Dutch, uh, you know, Indonesian. Uh, I just want to go at them and, and uh, read and listen and, and look up with our little, uh, you know, with the online dictionary, create flashcards. Um, yeah, explanations will help me because I'm, a, I'm an adult, but my ability to understand the explanations is limited. So. We are going to introduce notes pages so that our members can provide some explanation and I may refer to that and, and, and then go back and refer to it again and, and it'll be part of the whole process of gradually absorbing the language without parsing, without morphology, without whatever else was in that thing. And, uh, and so, you know, and when I pick up, I don't know, like the language instinct and I see these diagrams, uh, so I just happen to have it here, you know, all these diagrams and stuff like that, I tell you, my eyes just glass over, uh, you know, S dash NPVP a sentence can consist of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Do these terms actually mean anything in, in terms of other languages? This was the thing I found learning Chinese, a bunch of grammatical terms from, from uh, Western European languages that had, had no relevance for, for Japanese and, and Chinese. Anyway, enough. I've, this is quite a long one and um, I will leave you with that and I look forward to the continuing comments. And I must say that some of the linguistics, I don't want to knock linguistics and everyone who studies linguistics. I think it's very interesting to study the history of different languages and how they're related and how they develop. And, uh, and if people are interested, they're interested in it. So it's perfectly legitimate in that sense. It's just that uh, when people come at me and say that uh, you can't learn a language if you don't parse, if you don't know what phonemes and morphemes and all this other stuff uh, are, is, are, these things are, then, uh, you know, and you shouldn't be spouting off on how to learn languages because you're a fool and you're anti-intellectual and stuff. So I appreciate the ling linguists, in the sense of linguistic specialists, who have commented in a, in a nice tone uh, here at my, uh, at my uh, YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing further comments. Thank you.